Hi, welcome to the video on losses and power flow diagram of three phase induction motor. So, the types of losses which we come across in three phase induction motor and uh, also the power flow diagram in this. So, when it comes to losses uh, in three phase induction motor, the various power losses in induction motor can be classified as constant losses. Uh, and variable losses uh, mainly. So, under constant losses, we have core losses and mechanical losses. So, the constant losses can be further classified as core losses and mechanical losses, where core losses occurred in the stator core and rotor core. These are also called iron losses. These losses include eddy current losses and hysteresis losses as well. The eddy current losses are minimized by using laminated construction whereas hysteresis losses are minimized by selecting a suitable grade silicon steel as a material for stator and rotor. So, the iron loss or the core loss depends on the frequency. The stator frequency is always supply frequency hence stator iron losses are dominate as against this in the rotor because the frequency of the rotor is very less when compared to the frequency of the stator. So, which is because of the slip and it depends on slip times the supply frequency. Hence, rotor uh, iron losses are very small and hence generally neglected in the running condition. So, the mechanical losses include frictional losses at the bearings and winding losses. The friction changes with speed but practically the drop in speed is very small hence these losses are assumed to be the part of constant losses. So, next is the variable losses. This includes the copper losses in stator and rotor winding due to current flowing in the winding. As current changes, as load changes, as load changes, these losses are said to be variable losses. So, generally stator iron losses are combined with stator copper losses at a particular load to specify total stator losses at particular condition. So, as we know rotor copper loss is given by 3 I square R. So, it is analyzed separately where I square R is the rotor current per phase at particular R2 is equal to rotor resistance per phase. So, now coming to the power flow diagram. Induction motor always convert an electrical power input to the mechanical power. So, the various stages from electrical input to the useful power or shaft power that is the mechanical output uh, as undergoing the various stages. So, in this con conversion is called as power flow in an induction motor. The three phase supply is given by the stator uh, is given to the stator and it is the net electrical input to this uh, motor. So, if the motor power factor is cos phi, then VL, IL are line values, then the power input to the stator P input is given as root 3 VL, IL cos 5. So, these are all line values of supply voltage and current drawn by the stator. The net electrical power supplied is given by P input. So, where P in is net input electrical power. This is nothing but the stator input. The part of this power is utilized to supply the losses in the stator, which are stator core losses as well as copper losses. So, which I have stator losses which has stator uh, core losses and copper losses. So, after uh, you know this losses the remaining power is delivered to the rotor as an input power and that is called as P2. So, the output of the stator P2 will be the input to the rotor, power input to the rotor. So, the remaining power is to the rotor magnetically through the air cap with the help of rotating magnetic field. This is called rotor input that is P2. So, P2 is P input minus stator losses. As I said, stator losses uh, consists of core and copper losses with respect to stator. So, the rotor is not able to convert its entire input P2 into the mechanical uh, output. So, it has to supply the rotor copper losses. So, this rotor copper losses uh, is also you know having the iron losses and copper losses. Normally, iron losses of rotor are very negligible. Therefore, we have only the copper losses with respect to rotor that is Pc is equal to 3 into I2 R square into R2. So, where I2R is the rotor current 
you know, running condition. So R2 is the rotor resistance per phase. After supplying these losses, the output of the rotor is PM. So that is the mechanical power developed by the motor, which is denoted as PM, which is also referred as P2 minus PC from this power flow. Now, this power PM, uh, uh, power motor tries to deliver to the load connected via this shaft but during this mechanical transmission there is a part of uh, you know mechanical power utilized by this shaft and we come uh, you know across this uh, friction and windage losses and finally the power available to the load at the shaft is called net output power or useful power or shaft power so this is also referred as p output is pm minus mechanical losses the rating of the motor is you know specified in terms of value of p out so normally the rating of the machine is specified in terms of this p out the maximum output power of the machine when load condition is full load condition the above stages can be shown uh, you know diagrammatically as shown in this power flow diagram of an induction motor so coming to the rotor efficiency, normally when you talk about rotor efficiency, the rotor output is PM, the rotor output input is P2, therefore rotor efficiency is equal to rotor output by rotor input. So output of the rotor is gross mechanical power developed divided by rotor input, that is we can also say uh, PM by P2. Now coming to the net motor efficiency, net motor efficiency I am talking about the input with respect to this output so p out by pn that is the net motor power uh, you know efficiency so now there is a relation between this pc p2 and pm so if you observe this the relation between p2 pc pm we have a derivation also with respect to this the relation uh, you know where we come after deriving it is p2 is to pc is equal to pm which is nothing but 1 is to s is to 1 minus s so for example if i need to get a p2 by pc ratio it is you know uh, p2 by pc is 1 by uh, s if it is pc by pm it is uh, s by 1 minus s this is how we consider the ratio to calculate any power uh, you know in the power flow diagram Thank you for watching this video.